Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to our tool demo for Stack Up Designer and Impedance Calculator. Uh, I'm Pranav Tengsi, and I'll be giving you the demo of our tools. So, uh, for today's agenda, I'll speak about the services that Sierra Circuits provides. Uh, then we'll go to the Stack Up Designer. I'll talk about features of our Stack Up Designer. Oh, then we'll start with the demo of the Stack Up Designer. So after the Stack Up Designer, we'll move on to the Impedance Calculator tool. Uh, I'll talk about some of the structures and features of our Impedance Calculator tool. And we'll go to the demo of the Impedance Calculator tool. And like at the end, we'll have a Q&A session where we'll be addressing your questions. So please feel free to post any questions related to the tools in the chat and we'll be taking them. So Sierra Circuit provides PCB design, manufacturing and assembly services under one roof. Uh, we have our own PCB fab and assembly facilities. Uh, the benefit of working with us includes seamless interaction with PCB fab, in-house track up design, component purchase, material selection, etc. Uh, we have PCB design expertise in uh, high-speed board, HDI boards, design with fine pitch PGA, flex, rigid flex. Uh, we do bare board fabrication of rigid flex, rigid flex boards, HDI boards, boards with advanced and exotic materials, blind, buried, stack vias with very fine trace and space. So we have um, fabrication with aerospace and medical related boards. Uh, we have ITA registration. Uh, we do assembly services like SMT SM assembly, mixed assembly, plated throwall assembly, uh, and so on. Uh, we have our tools on our website. So we'll be giving you the demo of those today. So first one is the stack up designer. So uh, uh, stack up represents the construction of a multi-layer PCB and the stack up designer will help you create the stack up for your application. So, a stack up provides you information regarding the material that is used, uh, the thickness of material, copper thickness, etc., which is vital for design and fabrication. Stack up also determines the where your control impedance traces are, what's the reference plane, what's the trace width and spacing for the control impedances. So our stack up designer will help you construct multi-layer stack up with ease by following few easy steps. It provides precise options for cost optimized stack up structure. Uh, we also have stack up uh, impedance calculator, which will help you get desired impedance and trace weight or the, any signal layer. Now benefits of using a stack up designer is we also have option which will recommend you stack up if you have a complex BGA on your board. We have wide range of materials to choose from for your stack up. So we have a material compare guide which you can use to compare the material properties. Of, so you can select multiple materials and compare their properties side by side. We have help content at every step for you to refer to. Uh, so we'll start with the demo. So you need to visit our website, uh, www.protoexpress.com. So here, uh, top you'll find designers tools and inside designers tools, you'll find a PCB stack up designer. You need to click on it. So you'll be forwarded to the landing page of a PCB stack up designer. This page contains information regarding stack up designer. So to open the tool, you need to click on this button. You'll be forwarded to the tool. Right now, I was not logged into the website. so. I was forwarded to the login page. 
uh, if you have if you have a username password you can enter it and log in you'll be forwarded to the tool if you are not a member you can create an account it's very easy you you need to provide a username password first name uh, etc and you can create your account so uh, once you are signed in you can log in and you need to enter username password and log in to our website and you'll be forwarded to the stack up designer so this is the front page of our stack up designer uh, firstly you need to give some of some board information they like a project name or revision number pcb size target pcb thickness pcb material pcb type so uh, let's fill this in i'll say demo or revision a say pcb size 2 by 2 uh, you need to select a target pcb thickness so using this drop down well, we have given you some standard thicknesses to choose from so you can choose the thickness which for your application so i'll go with uh, 0.062 inches so using this drop down you need to select the material which will be used for your stack up so we have a list of material which covers a wide range of applications so you can choose the one uh, which is which you require if you want to see the material properties you need to click on this material selector compare guide and it will open a pop-up so in this pop-up you'll have the list of the materials the manufacturer you can click on this view button and it will open the material properties or uh, you can select multiple prop multiple materials and click on the compare button so you can compare the materials uh, so close we can close that uh, and you can select the material which you wish to use uh, you need to select the pcb type so we have only rigid right now so you need to select rigid once everything is filled and the board information the next section will come and this is the approach that you want to take to design your stack up so there are two options here one is where you know the number of layers which are required in the design and the second option is when you have a complex pga and you don't know uh, what will be the number of layers that will be required in the design so the complex bga it dictates what kind of piece, uh, what kind of uh, stack up you will have to use so we have two options so firstly we'll go with the first option where uh, you know the number of layers which are required in the design so you need to click, select this option tick mark the next section will come and in this section you need to give layer count and the signal plane combination so firstly using this drop down you can select the number of layers which are present in your design the uh, six layer eight layer ten layer etc so i'll select eight layer uh, and using this drop down you need to give the signal plane combination uh, as I've selected eight layer board, uh, I have two options. Either I can go with a four signal, four plane or five signal, three plane. So I'll choose four signal, six, four plane here. Once all the data is filled, you can click on run stack up designer and it will generate the recommended solutions. So you'll have a list of options, stack up options given in this table. Uh, so this table have information regarding each option so first is the total number of layers you have the signal layers number of plane layers so this data is what you have selected above so we have selected eight layer four signal four plane so this will be same then we have a hdi standard column so this column uh, hdi or standard is defined by the vias that are possible in the stack up so a HDI stack up can only have a through hole via. Sorry, a standard stack up can only have a through hole via. A HDI stack up allows for through hole via as well as a micro via. This number in front of HDI, it represents the number of sequential laminations that are present in that stack up. 
So sequential lamination will allow you to have a blind or buried VRs. So you, as per your application or your need, you can choose any uh, one of these. If you want to know more about uh, this, you can click on this help icon and it will open up this pop-up. It will give you some details about what standard is or uh, HDI zero is. So you can see this is the standard stack up. There's only through hole via. HDI zero is similar to a standard stack up, except there is a, it allows additional blind VR. HDI one, the one represents the additional sequential lamination, or uh, et cetera. So this table will have the details regarding HDI and a reference image. So you can go through this. Uh, the next column is the sequential lamination. This is the num how many number of sequential laminations that are present in that stack up option. Uh, next column is the PCB thickness. So this is the thickness that we have selected above. So we've selected 0 0.062 inches. So all the stack up will have the same thickness. Finally, there is technology level and cost index. So for a stack up, a technology level defines the drill size, the pad size, the trace width, and other parameters which can be used in that stack up. So the features of technology level three are finer than technology level two and technology level two is more finer than technology level one. Also cost index will give you a relative idea of how costly the stack up is as compared to another stack up. So you can see technology level one stack up is less costly than a technology level three stack up where the features are more fine. Uh, once you know which option to go with, you can click on the report button to open that stack up. So we'll go with option B. Uh, I'll click on this report button and it will open up the stack. It will open up the report. So first thing you'll see is the stack up. So this is the stack up that we chose, the eight layer stack up. Above this stack up, you'll see all the information that you have filled on the previous page like the material that we selected, the thickness, the layer count, uh, what's the VR structure, etc. Now you can use this dropdown to change any input. If you wish to change, you can do it on this page itself. You don't need to go back to the previous page and do changes to your input. You can change thickness or layer count, anything on this page and click on this generate custom stack up button and your changes will be reflected in the stack up. So you don't need to go back to the previous page. This is the image of a rough image of the eight layer stack up that uh, we selected. So it's a eight layer, there's a through VR and we have blind VRs from one to two and eight to seven. Next is the, we have the stack up. So this stack up table contains all the information of the stack up. First column is the layer number, so one to eight, we selected eight layer board, so all the layer number. Uh, next column is the materials that are present on each uh, layer. So we have foil, pre prep core, copper, etc. So this materials. Uh, next layer is the layer type. Now layer type gives you what that layer is exactly. So we have selected a four signal, four plane. So there are four signal layers and four plane layers. Layer type will tell you how the signal and plane is distributed on all eight layers. So first is the signal, next is the plane layer. So you can get that knowledge from layer type. Next is the copper percentage column. So what's the copper percentage on that layer? So then we have the stack up. So this stack up has a solder mask. Uh, and the layers properly with different colors. We have a through hole VR and there's a, there's a, this is the HDI zero that we have selected. There's a blind VR from one to two and eight to seven. Uh, next column is the finished thickness. So this column gives you thickness of each layer. And at the end, you'll get the total thickness of total press thickness of the board. So this thickness will be as close to as close as possible to the target thickness that you have selected. So this is the total pressed out thickness. Uh, you can remove the solder mask uh, if you don't want to. So there's a 
X button, which is present on both on top solder mask as well as on the bottom solder mask. So you can remove both the solder mask if they are not required. You can add them back. So using the X or plus button. So the next column is the base thickness column. This will give you what is the base thickness of that dielectric or that copper layer, or it's, if it's a foil, what's the foil thickness? Uh, next column is the plating. So if you have a plating on any layer, the next column will have how much well, plating is will be done on that layer. Next is the description. So this is the dielectric description of what which dielectric is used on that particular layer. So say we have 370 HR, four mil core, half ounce by half ounce, also core which is used here. So we have a dielectric description. And at the end, there's the there's dielectric constant of that material which is displayed. Next part of the report is uh, creating control impedance lines. So to create a control impedance lines, you need to add, uh, click on this plus button and it will add an empty line to this table. You need to give uh, on which layer your uh, impedance trace is. You need to give the target impedance. Let's say I have a 50 ohm target impedance. I need to select the model. So it's a single-ended or a differential pair. Also, you need to select the appropriate model. I uh, need to give the reference layer. So I'll say I have my reference is two. And it has given, selected the model. So it's a coated microstrip single-ended. So with this input, the tool automatically selects the transmission line model. And to calculate the trace weight, you need to click on this calculate button and it will calculate the trace weight. Uh, it will show you the calculated impedance as this is a coated microstrip. It will show you the impedance before mask and also it will show you the propagation delay. Also, you can add multiple calculators, uh, multiple impedance control impedances. So say I have a line at three, uh, uh, I need a hundred ohms differential pair and my reference is layer two and layer four. So it's a strip line differential pair, which I have selected. So it's a strip line. You can give a uh, trace spacing or you can give a uh, trace plus space. Any of these values you can give, let's say I need a 10 trace plus space. Uh, you can delete if you have added anything extra, you can delete by using the delete button. Also, you can calculate all the impedances at one go. If you click, if you press this calculate the impedance button, all the calculations will be done simultaneously. Now this table will show you a limited data. So if you want to see more information regarding the calculation or regarding the impedance calculation, you need to click on this view button and you'll be directed to our impedance calculator where uh, you'll see all the inputs which are uh, taken in that tool and also it will give you the result. Also, it will show, you'll be able to see more parameters which will be, which are calculated. So you can click on that view button and see all the parameters, all the results as well as inputs. Next is we have our technology parameters and cost index table. So this table will give you via and paired diameters which are possible for each technology level. So technology level one, two, three. Also the trace width on different layers as well as on different technology level. Also the cost index for each technology level. Then we have this via set information. Uh, this table shows you uh, what via set that the stack up supports. So we selected HDI is zero. So what via set that stack up supports will be shown in this via set information table. Now, once you are you have added all the impedances. You can save the stack up. You need to click on the save button and your report will be saved. Uh, it will generate uh, a stack up ID or sorry, report ID. Uh, see the report ID generated. 
and you can see this stack up report anytime when you log in the next time you'll be able to see the report all the impedances that you have calculated you'll be able to see now this approach is when you know uh, how many number of layers your board you need the board of so now let's look at the other approach so the other approach is when you have a complex bga so for that you need to enter the values or uh, these values are uh, these parameters are required in both the cases you need to give the thickness you need to give the material or uh, the board type so this time we'll take the second approach where i uh, have a complex pga and i don't know how many number of layers which are actually required in my design so you need to click on that option so this new section will come in which you need to give the details about the pga pattern so we have five different pga patterns to select from and you can select the appropriate pga pattern which suits your board and you need to give the pins in x and y direction let's say i uh, have 30 and 30 pins in x and y direction also you need to give the bga pitch so using this drop down you need to select what's the pitch of your bga uh, it's a 1 mm pitch to 0.4 mm pitch so there are five options to select so let's say 0.8 mm pitch it also calculates the total number of pins and estimated number of signal pins so total number of pins are calculated using the uh, pins that we given and the estimated number of so we give you an estimated number of signal pins so if you know exactly how many number of signal pins you have you can change this or you can keep it as it is and once you filled in all the above parameters you need to click the run stack up designer and it will give you the recommended solution so all these stack up option they support the pga that you have given the information about so all these stack up they support the pga and the the table structure is similar to the previous so you'll see the total number of layers you'll see the number of signal layers number of plane layers so we have stack ups from 8 layer to 14 layer which are suggested you can choose the one which is which you look is the best for you uh there is the hdi standard column uh we have the sequential lamination column same as before we also have this pcb thickness column in which the thickness that you have selected above so we have selected 0.062 inches and that will be highlighted and it will also show you what other thicknesses uh which are possible if you take that stack up so this is the thickness column uh it will also show you which technology level you should go with which supports the bga so you can go with the technology level 2 you can go with technology level 3 or uh, for 8 layer 10 layer so this technology level column then you have the cost index column you can compare the cost relative cost of each stack up so once you know which option to go with you can click on the report button and it will open up the report so let's go to the report page so this is the stack up that we selected this table remains exactly same all the columns are exactly same in both the cases above the stack up you will have all the information that you have filled on the previous page let's say we have selected the eight layer board so eight layer hdi1 all this information is taken from the previous page now here also you can change anything using the drop down and you'll get only the options which will support that pga so you can feel free to change the change anything from the drop down and generate custom stack up and it will generate the new stack up that you have selected that the changes that you have made uh, this is the rough image of how the stack up will be here you'll see the bga pattern that you have selected the bga information that you give or uh, what is the total number of pins pitch etc you can change this bga pattern on this page also so you don't need to go back to the previous page so you can click on edit and you can do changes you need add the pins in uh, x y direction 
and you can update the BGA details. So this way you can update the BGA and generate the stack up on this page itself without going back to the previous page. Uh, the process to add impedance calculator is the same. I need to press the plus button. This will add a new line and you can add the signal or uh, the target impedance model and you have the impedance, the uh, control impedance added to the report. Then at the bottom, we have the fan out recommendation. So here the in this table, this table gives you what is the minimum trace and space um, which can be used on each layer. Also, it gives you how many number of traces which are possible between the adjacent BGA pads or the VR pads under the BGA. So they are graphically represented. So you can know how many traces you can pass through the BGA pads. Also, we have uh, we give the drill diameter and pad diameter under the BGA area and what can be used outside the BGA area. So there are two tables separate. So you can refer this uh, tables. Also, we have the VR set information. So what uh, what VR sets the stack up supports. So this will be, uh, it will tell you what VR set the stack up supports. So this also stack up, you can save. So you need to press the save button and your stack up will be saved. It will generate a stack up uh, report ID. And so you can see the saved stack up anytime that you log in to the, to the website to our stack up designer. So this is the stack up ID or report ID that is generated. You can see the saved stack up. When you come to the stack up designer, you can see the saved stack up on top. So there's a button to view the saved stack up and it will show you the stack up that you have saved. So I've saved two stack ups today or three actually. So this is the list of the stack ups that are saved. Uh, you can rearrange them. So you can rearrange if possible. You can search by the name, by the project ID, or you can delete any of the stack up if you don't want them here. And you can click on the view button and you'll be forwarded to the report, which will have all the control impedance lines that you have added. Everything will be there. So just press view button and you'll be forwarded to the report. So this is our stack up designer. Now moving on to the impedance calculator. So our impedance calculator is based on our uh, 2D numerical solutions of Maxwell's equations. So it renders fairly accurate results, which are suitable to use in uh, manufacturing and engineering analysis. Along with the impedance, impedance of the trace, it calculates other Rhine parameters like capacitance of the trace, inductance of the trace, propagation delay, uh, effective dielectric constant for that structure. Uh, it calculates and shows you the coupling coefficient in the case of differential pair. It gives you odd and even more parameters in differential pairs. We have a wide range of models. We have 82 models which you can choose from and you can choose the exact model which suits your application. Uh, it's very easy to use. We have recommendation of parameter values. Uh, at every point, you can press the help button and you'll be able to see the uh, help content for every parameter. So type of models. So there are basic, we have uncoated microstrip, uh, we have coated microstrip, we have embedded microstrip and there's a strip line. A uh, coated and uncoated microstrip is when your signal trace is on the outer layers of the PCB. So whether it's coated or uncoated, you can choose this. Embedded microstrip is your trace is embedded on in internal layers. Now, depending on the position of reference plane, with respect to the trace, you can either have a 
a normal embedded microstrip or there can be an inverted case. And lastly, there's a strip line where you have a reference plane above the trace and there's one reference plane below the trace. So we have these four basic structures. And for each structure, we have more models. So we have three single-ended models. So you can go with a non-coplanar single-ended, a coplanar single-ended. You can go with coplanar single-ended without ground model. Also, there are three differential pair models. So you can go with non-coplanar differential pair, coplanar differential pair, and a coplanar differential pair without ground plane. So you can select the structure that you want, and you can select the model uh, depending on your application and choose the calculator. So we'll go to the impedance calculator. Now, uh, to go to the impedance calculator, you need to visit a website. So we'll go to uh, www.protoexpress.com. Same way in the designer's tools, you'll see the impedance calculator mentioned. You need to click on the impedance calculator. Uh, it will open up the landing page of the impedance calculator. Uh, here in on this page, there is uh, information on how to use the tool and what the tool is so you can go through that now to open the tool you need to click on this button try this new tool and you'll be forwarded up to the first page of the impedance calculator so again you need to log in to get access now i was logged in for the stack up designer so this it didn't ask me to log in again but you need to log in if you're not logged into the website. Now here you see the stack up structure. You can choose the structure. Uh, we have uncoated microstrip, coated, embedded, and strip line. And at the bottom, there are six options to choose the model that you want. So you can choose a single-ended, a differential pair, coplanar single-ended, etc. So I'll take a uh, coated microstrip and we'll go with single ended. So once you select the structure and the model, you'll see the calculator options uh, open, uh, will be displayed to you. So there are two calculators to choose. So one is the coated microstrip single ended. This is the normal model. And then we have a composite model where there's no one dielectric, but there's, there are two dielectrics between the trace and the reference plane. So you can choose the normal model or the composite model depending on your application. So now to open the calculator, you need to press the open button. I'll, I'll, I'll click on the open button for the coated microstrip, uh, single ended. And yeah, so it'll open the calculator. Now you see the image on the left hand side of the geometry that you have selected. Uh, it's well labeled so you can you'll know what parameters are what so and below the image there's a drop down to select the units so you can choose the units in which you are working in so you can go with english units or metric units so i'll keep the mills mills is the default one uh then you need to enter the parameters like dielectric height, dielectric constant, or uh, you need to give the trace parameters, like you need to give the trace weight, trace thickness, uh, delta W. Now, for me, these values are pre filled because I had done calculation on this tool previously. So, my last calculations are when I, op when I open the tool the next time, whatever you had done last time, those calculations you'll see. The, you'll see the inputs present. You can change them for the next new calculations. Uh, so you need to enter the trace parameter, like trace weight, trace thickness. Uh, there is a option to enter the delta W. So delta W is the difference between the bottom of the trace width and top of the trace width. So because of the edge back effect, the trace is not exactly a rectangular shape, but it's it takes a trapezoidal shape. So you need to take into account the trapezoidal shape. So we have this parameter called as delta W. 
Now, if you don't know what to enter in this field, you can click on this help icon and it will open up the help pop up. Uh, it shows the delta W is difference between the bottom and the top of the trace weight. And this table will give you what delta W you should enter for the copper weight. Now, delta W depends on the base copper that you start with. So, uh, this table you can refer to to enter the delta W that suits your application. What, what is the copper weight that you're using? So, you can refer this table to enter delta W. Uh, trace thickness. Uh, you need to enter the coating. So, this is the coated calculator. So you need to enter the parameters, coating parameters. You need to enter the H1C, H2C, and also you need to enter the coating dielectric constant. So basically H1C is mostly equal to the trace thickness and H2C is kept at 0.5. So if you have some other values, you can put the values or you can enter the coating dielectric constant. And there are two calculations here. So if you know uh, the trace width, so suppose uh, if you have a six mil trace and you can calculate the impedance of a six mil trace or six mil weight trace. So you need to press the calculate button, which is next to the calculate impedance uh, section and it will calculate the impedance for you. Along with the impedance, it calculates your propagation delay, inductance, capacitance, uh, effective dielectric constant, these values are displayed. Now, this is a coated microstrip. So, we'll also calculate the uncoated impedance and it will be displayed to you for your reference. Now, the other way around, if you know uh, a target impedance, so suppose if you have a target impedance of, I'll say, 50 ohms in your mind and you want to know what trace weight you should use. So, you can enter 50 in this target single ended impedance field and press the calculate button next to the trace weight and it will calculate the trace weight for that target impedance. So you can do the calculations both ways to calculate trace weight as well as to calculate the impedance. Uh, we also have a material dielectric constant guide. So you can click on this button at the bottom which says like show dielectric constant guide and it will open up a table. So this table contains a uh, dielectric constant and dissipation factor of a material uh, at different thicknesses and at different resin content. So this data is for the pre-preg and we also have the same data for core, core thicknesses. So you, you know the dielectric constant and the dissipation factor of uh, core thickness and at what resin content. So you can use the drop down to select the material or uh, that uh, you want so you can change the material and the data will change so this pre pre this materials uh, dielectric constant and dissipation factor will be shown to you in this table so you can refer this table while you enter the height and the dielectric constant uh, in this in any calculator. So this table is present in all the calculators. So you can click on this button and to open up the table for your reference. Now, this is a, a basic model. So we also have composite models. We have seen there are two dielectrics. So like if you look at embedded, in embedded, there are two dielectrics, one above and one below. So we have uh, multiple composite cases. In that case, we have composite A, we have composite B, we have composite C. And this composite is present for all the calculators. So we have differential pair composites, coplanar composites. So there's a basic model and all the composite models are available. So depending on your application, you can choose exactly what calculator to choose and you can um, do the calculation. So even the without ground plane models will have a basic model and also will have a composite A, composite B, composite C model. So you can uh, choose the right, cal uh, right calculator for your application. 
so that is our uh, impedance calculator and stack up designer so we'll take so you can ask questions if you Um, Pranav, yeah. maybe you can yeah. go through the chat and uh, uh, yeah. start asking questions so you can read them out loud and just uh, start replying. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. question. Yeah, question, uh, question, will you be providing uh, the um, recording of this uh, webinar? Uh, we will send the presentation tomorrow um, with the recording. Would that include the recording? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, feel free to unmute yourself if you want to ask any questions. Are, are we going through the questions here, or they're not? You're not going to answer the questions on the right. Uh, Pranav Anil. Yeah. Can you go through the chat and start answering the questions? There is a question. Uh, Pranav, there is a question about whether it can do rigid flex. Uh, yes, yes, I, I've seen that. Uh, so currently, the stack up designer uh, can only do rigid. Uh, we are working on uh, flex and rigid flex. So Updates will be uh, available pretty soon. Yeah. May, may I answer that question? Uh, 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 Pranav and the team are working on the flex one. The, you know, the internal prototyping has already been done and it will be extended maybe in a couple of months to include both flex as well as rigid flex. I don't think I saw what what are the uh, kind of export and report options that um, that we can use to kind of archive the findings. Uh, uh, can you please repeat the question again? What what uh, once we've developed a stack up in your tool, we want to mm -hmm. output that to a, a report or a PDF, or how do we how do we archive that um, oh. in a kind of a meaningful way? Okay, okay. Yeah, currently PDF option is available. You can download the uh, stack up as a PDF. Uh, we are working on IPC 2581 export as well in XML format. So you can import into a stack up. It will be available in the next version in a couple of months. So basically, uh, the output of the stack up designer should be uh, in due course of time if it is available in the IPC format then it should be able to be imported into the ECAD 
project tool that you are working on straight away. That we are working on that right now and it should be possible. Definitely we are thinking that by the end of this year, we should be able to launch that. Does that, uh, right now, of course, the PDF version is available. The PDF report is definitely available, which can be sent to the, you know, the, the manufacturer, designers, etc. Thank you. Uh, in, in Sierra circuits, we will also link uh, our, uh, this, uh, you know, stack up. If somebody has done a stack up design, he wants to get the PCB fabricated, then the whole linkage will also be provided. Yeah. Uh, there's a question on the glass view. So, uh, can you please elaborate uh, there? Okay. Uh, what is the question on the glass view? Have we taken care of the glass view effect? Is that the question? Uh, so, is it like, uh, how about the glass view? So, does it take into account? See, right now, uh, there is in the let me put it this way. The glass wave comes into the play when you have differential pairs. Because then we are talking of the SQ and uh, other things arising as a result of, uh, let us say, different uh, dielectric, local different dielectric constant effective uh, in the two branches of the two lines of the differential pair. We have not taken care of that except a little bit in the spacing region. However, uh, there is a, a effort will be made as to how to mitigate the effect of the uh, glass weave and that would be issued as a guide to the designers. I think that is all that we can say at, at the moment right now. There is one thing which I like to comment. Uh, right now, the models that you see are primarily the lossless transmission lines. Now, the uh, the upgrade of this to include the lossy transmission lines that means calculate the attenuation and the you know the S parameter insertion loss S one two etc. Those things would also be, they all, in fact, the uh, our internal working is almost over on all, most of them, and they would also be incorporated. Uh, I mean, the, in the extension, extended version of the impedance calculator in due course of time, to include the lossy transmission lines. And so, so that you can calculate the, it will also display you how much is the insertion loss per unit length and all that stuff in terms of dBs. Naturally, the information uh, and uh, since the insertion loss depends on the frequency, so therefore, uh, possibly there will also be a graph showing that with various uh, uh, frequency how the insertion loss is varying. Does anyone have uh, any other questions? Any suggestions? Please feel free to send your comments and 
suggestions to us and feedback. We would highly appreciate that.